Hi, it's Rachel here again from Offroad CC, and as promised, I'm ready for my review of this year's Giant Trance 29er. So, the 29er version of the Giant Trance was launched back in the summer of 2018, and then a couple of months ago, the 2020 version was, was launched. It's that 2020 version of this bike in the base spec that we have here on test. To start with, there's very little similarities between the 27 and a half inch Trance and the 29er, aside from the name and the suspension linkage. So this 29er gets less travel, there's 115 mil at the rear compared to 140 mil of the smaller wheeled bike. And then there's 130 mil fork in the 29er and that's compared to the 150 mil fork found on the other 27 and a half inch Trance. The bike we have here, which is the bottom of the range aluminium Trance 29.3, comes in at £2,099. There are two other more expensive aluminium bikes, and then there are some much more expensive carbon ones, all with the same geometry. As I said, our test bike gets an alloy frame, and that's fitted with a Marzocchi Bomber Z2 fork and a trinium mounted Fox Float DPS performance shock. Under ownership by Fox, the fork gets an air cartridge from a Fox 34 Rhythm fork and then it gets Marzocchi's own rail damper. When riding, I found the Z2 to feel a little chattery over small bumps and it dives through the travel on big hits a little bit. As I did, you'll likely need to experiment with inserting Fox volume reducers to help the fork ramp up near the end of the travel. The Z2 does, however, rival the 35mm stanchion revelation for stiffness, though, so that sets it apart from how I found a less stiff Fox 34. Elsewhere on the bike, there is a SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain and Shimano MT400 and MT401 brake and brake lever combination. I understand this is a budget bike, but the clutch on the SX Eagle mech just doesn't work. So over bumps, I can feel the mech swinging about and I can feel those reverberations up through my feet. It's off-putting at best and it's downright noisy at worst. That said, the shifting did work well in my test time and it's great to have that large range for winching up steep climbs. The bottom bracket used is also press fit. So I didn't encounter any creaking in my test time, which was about a month in the mud in winter but it's something to be aware of if you aren't a press fit fan. I feel the bike is under braked using that combination of Shimano MT400 caliper and an MT401 lever. The brakes look budget as well and the performance is as such. They aren't very powerful at all and the pads also move in the calipers under light braking, causing juddering. Another thing, the disc rotors used are Shimano's N6000s, which are only supposed to be used with resin, so organic pads, which if you're riding in UK conditions and you ride a lot, it will mean you'll be swapping pads more times than you swap your socks. So that might be some exaggeration, but it would be nice to see a different disc fitted. The cockpit, as you might expect on a giant bike, is an entirely giant affair, with a nice short 40mm stem, 780mm wide bars and chunky giant grips. There's also a 125mm ohmband dropper post with an underbar shifter style lever. There are giant wheels and hubs and they're fitted with Maxxis tyres. This bike has got a Minion DHF 2.3 at the front and a DHR2 2.3 at the rear. Both are set up tubeless from the off, which is great to see but the front tire doesn't get the tachier 3C compound. Lastly, the frame is entirely internally rooted and there's pleasingly precious little rattle. Also, as we've come to expect from giant bikes, the whole lot comes in at a decent weight too. So this bike without pedals weighs in at 13.8 kilograms. That's just 30.4 pounds, which is impressively light for this type of bike with this spec list at just over 2K. In terms of geometry, the 29er Trance gets a slacker head angle, 66.5 degrees, and a longer reach, 442mm, on this medium bike than its 27.5 inch longer travel counterpart. I reckon that that indicates that the smaller wheeled Trance might be in need of an update soon. The chainstay on this bike measures 435mm and the wheelbase is 1176mm. And then lastly, the effective seat tube angle is 74.5 degrees. Whilst the geometry of this bike might shout trail bike, in reality, the ride is much more conservative. The 115mm of travel at the rear, that slightly short reach and a short wheelbase ensures that this is a long distance machine rather than one for more technical riding. I found the bike does excel at flowing, smoother, single track. It's responsive 
and that suspension paired with the Fox Vote DPS shock ensures that the rear end is engaging, soaking up small bumps, but it's also ready to pop and pump at will. The geometry I found suited gradually sloping descents rather than rougher, steeper single track, where that short reach and the wheelbase make themselves known with a choppy, unbalanced ride over larger successive bumps in the terrain. 115mm of rear suspension finds the end of the travel rather quickly when the trails get more rugged. And as it does so and it's more bumpy, it's there that you'll realise that you also need to run higher pressures in the tyre to prevent the rims from hitting the floor too. Gradually sloping is just the sort of the train that this bike and its rider will no doubt encounter on longer distance trails, and for that, the bike it sells. It climbs pretty well despite the slack 74.5 degrees effective seat angle, and that's a number which both confuses and disappoints me a little. If you take the new 29er Giant Rain, the long travel bike, for example, that bike gets a near 77 degree seat angle, and it's a number that will put a rider in a much more efficient position for climbing and then combined with a longer wheelbase will make the bike better balanced on steeper inclines. This chance has a slack seat angle which positions the rider's weight towards the rear and in combination with a long effective top tube and a short wheelbase that is, gives a front end that wants to lift on steep climbs, meaning that you'll have to expend more effort to keep the front wheel tracking. It's disappointing, as Giant demonstrate with the rain, that they clearly appreciate the value of a super seat tube angle, so I wonder why not give the 29 a chance one. Doing that, and combining it with the light weight of this aloe bike, the smooth, supple suspension, and that suspension that says limited bob under power, it would make this chance an absolutely excellent climber. So that moves us nicely onto the topic of what else could you buy. There are a few other similar options out there, so there is the new Marin Rift Zone 3, which is pretty close in comparison, but with a bit more travel, that's got 125 mil of rear travel. It is 200 pounds more expensive, but you get a Shimano SLX 12-speed drivetrain, the same fork and four piston brakes. Or you can spend 1,900 quid on a Canyon Neuron, that's 130 mil, and a great spec list, including GX Eagle. But according to our Editor John, it gets rather old school geometry, so it would just depend on your riding tastes. The Giant Trans 29 is in a rather niche category of 115 mil cross country bikes. In this category, though, it's not bad value, but there isn't a whole lot of direct comparison out there either. It's not a trail slayer, and as trails get rougher and steeper, it'll fill out of its comfort zone, it'll be slower and sketchier than other short travel trails bikes, but on longer cross country missions, it will excel. It pedals well, it's light, and there's enough comfort and scope in the suspension to help you out in tricky situations should you encounter them. So yeah, it's not a do-it-all trail bike, limited rear travel makes sure of that, but it will be a lot of fun if you like turning out the miles and you can accept that slack seat angle. If you want to read the full review, you can head over to www.off.road.cc and find it there. My next reviews are likely to be a couple of giant gravel bikes, but between now and then, there's Christmas to get out of the way and also some riding to be done. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the new year.